Hi, uh, today I'm going to talk about changing a string. Okay, changing a string sounds like a one meat operation, but uh, there are actually a lot of things to think about while doing it. Uh, first, uh, changing a string is uh, often a planned operation. Uh, you don't want to find out the same day you have a concert or something that okay this string has uh, it's broken almost here so uh, i have to change it but i have a concert in two hours help or when you tune your strings you have to sort of make a very strange position to uh, sort of get a good grip on the peg also, you know the problem with the pegs, uh, click, 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 uh, and it's very hard. The audience sits, look at you, and uh, uh, you just cannot find the right position for it. So it clicks a little bit past, a little bit off, tick, 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 and um, uh, you just get nervous. So uh, I am uh, going to show you how to... Uh, fix these problems. You can actually change a string right before a concert and uh, it uh, sits very good in tune. Hang on. So what's there to think about? Well first change one string at a time because if you take all the strings down it's uh, more than possible that the sound post inside here loses its, its pressure uh, how the strings press the top so it stands, so it falls. Uh, is it a little bit uh, too short? You can still play on it when the strings are there, but when the strings are gone, the pressure goes away and the sound post falls, and then you're in problem. So, one string at the time. So, I take in one string down and uh, I um, have the peg here uh, and the bearings around uh, well you can see where the peg uh, uh, is uh, smeared <laughs> to uh, sort of fit in the hole oh my English is terrible but what you can do is take a sandpaper and very, very careful, just take off like this. There are sometimes small cakes from um, this grease you put on your peg to have it uh, run smoothly. And uh, these cake can f uh, these, uh, this grease can form some cake. And then the only spots that holds the peg is on top of these cakes. So it's a very small uh, surface and that uh, makes the peg slip. So just take off whatever is on these bearing spots. And uh, considering the holes, never go into the hole. It's just forbidden. You can only damage things if you go in there. You have to have a special tool, which a violin maker have. Uh, it's called a reamer that uh, sort of cleans the hole. But leave the hole alone. Okay, now it's time to uh, grease the pegs. And uh, for this purpose, uh, you have a lot of different peg pastes that are produced. I use one called Kivunka, Kivunkal, from Israel, made by Luthier Avraham Amar. I think it's good. But uh, there are, as I said, there are so many peg pastes. And what you do is just smear it on, on the surfaces that uh, uh, sort of shines when you put it in like this. And uh, it should be 
shining all around. If it's just shining in some spots, then uh, it uh, has too little surface. And maybe you should uh, let your uh, violin maker take a look at your pegs. Okay, I find this one very good. Uh, this is uh, maybe a little bit too greasy. So I want to uh, have it to stick a little bit more. So I take a normal school chalk and smear it on like this. And now it runs, but uh, the runs with the paste and the chalk make it sit. Uh, you can also go to, a, I don't know where they sell, a beauty store or something. It's called uh, Savon de Marseille. It's a Marseille soap. This is 72% fat in it, so it's very fat. And um, if you <laughs> uh, take and saw it in small pieces, you can provide the whole orchestra with it uh, and make small chunks like this, and you have it for life. Uh, this is for greasing up so it runs, uh, oil it up so to say, and the chalk is to get it stick a little bit and stop. So you can uh, you can add one or the other to have it uh, run the way you like. Before putting the string on I want to be sure that the string flows easily over the upper nut and the bridge. So I smear it with graphite, ordinary pencil, like that, like that, done. So now we have come to actually put the string on. And I show you on the peg without uh, putting it then in there. It's more visible here. Some people just put the string in like that, so it doesn't go through the peg. And uh, in that case, uh, there is nothing that holds the string in the peg. So what I want you to do is put it really through. And when you screw it on, you put it on the small side first, one layer, two layers, and then you go into the um, uh, wall where the big end is. So now we put it in here. And uh, find the hole. And the first turn mm -hmm. on the small end. And the second turn also on the small end, but uh, then it's important that you go direction to the big end so the thing that goes through really is squeezed in and hold back. Now you go all the way to the wall and doing this makes it very tight here which also have the advantage of pulling the screw or the peg into the hole. If you have all the windings on the small end here, uh, the string will go like that and also pull it out of the hole and you don't want that. You want it uh, help to sort of keep it in place and get it firmer the more uh, you put it on. So we, if it's too tight you can pull it out a little bit so there's more space for the string. and. Uh, there's a, a thread going around the string here and if you sort of go 
over the nut with that one you wipe the uh, graphite away which you just put there so not put it in the uh, on the upper nut until you have it wound on you put it in the hole here if you find it or far And now we're done with that. So now we come to the part where uh, you have to uh, sort of tune the string and do it one time for all, so to say. And uh, to do that, I have tuned it up now, about where it should be. And then I take a cloth uh, maybe we move you a little bit back like that and sort of with pressure shall we without the cloth like this uh, you see that but with the fingers uh, it will burn your fingers because uh, the friction but with a cloth in between you can go up and down the string like that and now it sort of lowered itself and we go about there and we take the cloth again go up and down this is very good for the string too, because uh, the windings on the string are sort of set free. I got this tip from uh, a guy at Tomastic String Factory. This time it didn't need that much tuning up. Coming. Now it's almost there. Well, we can do it the fourth time, so. Or is it the fifth? I don't know. Now, it will stay in tune and um, do it from start, so to say. And you can play your concert on it. Now we put the string on and um, everything is fine. But uh, there is one small problem and that is uh, that the peg is very uncomfortable to reach to tune it. You have to sort of stand half on your head to uh, have it uh, nicely fit in your hand. So what can we do? Well, the obvious is to tune it down and um, when you are at the very start of it you either pull uh, the string a little bit out of the hole Or you can take something and pull it a little bit further in. But the important thing is that it really has to have a, a part of it going really through so it can lock by being squeezed against the hole. Like that. Now the peg is in good position so it's easy to tune it. Uh, the G P 
peg should stay quite vertical. The D peg is a little bit more slanted. The A peg fits like this. And the E peg shouldn't actually stay uh, like this. Uh, I got this tip from um, a good friend of mine. He's a former concertmaster of Gothenburg Symphony and uh, Mr. Chris Thorvaldsson. And he said that in order to have a good place for vibrato in the first position, you don't want to knock into the peg like that. So it should preferably stay straight down like that. Not with a blade like this. So uh, I will fix that before I re uh, return it to the customer. Okay. Okay, so now the string is in place and uh, everyone's happy. Uh, maybe you changed all your strings, but uh, uh, well, that's up to you. Uh, there is one more thing to really think about, and that is the bridge. Because when you put new strings on, all the uh, pulling of the, the strings here makes the bridge sort of fall on its toes. And uh, that is very bad uh, in time, because uh, the bridge can warp and uh, be bent forward. And uh, uh, then with a warped bridge you have to invest in another bridge, or which is quite costly. So uh, I'm going to teach you how to uh, sort of raise it up and uh, do it safely. Uh, some people, let's see if I can get this, some people take a grip like this, uh, like that and just pulls the upper uh, uh -huh, the upper uh, edge here back and uh, nothing happens because uh, there's often uh, very much uh, rosin here and suddenly it just slips and you're not capable to sort of uh, react before the bridge is all, uh, all down. Or you put pressure on the middle of the bridge here, like that, and you can actually crack the bridge, because this uh, line here, uh, just in the middle, is not very long and it's quite fragile actually. So you can break the bridge. So I show you an, uh, a safer way to raise your bridge. Okay, put it at your, uh, on your chest like this. Take your long fingers and index fingers against the fingerboard and the tailpiece and put your thumbs in the middle of the bridge like that. Now you can see uh, exactly the position of the bridge and by pulling and pushing with the no or actually <laughs> not pulling pushing with the thumb you can move the bridge position and with the other thumb you your uh, sort of pressing a little bit towards it so it doesn't accidentally fall off like that and you can also check visually uh, that uh, yeah, the position is correct and the correct position position uh, should be where there's a straight angle on the back of the bridge there's a little stomach on the bridge from uh, the front so uh, the bridge should sort of cut the string angle here in two and uh, therefore it uh, it seems to be leaning a little bit back but not too much 
and uh, that is that's it by this uh, grip uh, it cannot fall over so it's um, I think it works very good <laughs>